Hello and welcome to Match Day Live. We're back again. This is only our second Match Day Live, but we are back. Um, so any technical issues, we've also moved outside. Um, might be down to that. So please forgive us uh, is a good start, I guess. Yeah, that's it. Beg forgiveness. Please yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Uh, my name's Liam Burton. I'm Chris Williams and the lights are reflecting off my head from the stand over behind. The murky old afternoon here in Oxford, isn't it? Yeah, and so the, the sky's come really bright, so we're sort of backlit. Um, which is probably good after Christmas Day when we're all feeling the effects. Yeah, yeah. So I've got a pocket full of quality speed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to say right at the start as well, we miss you. We thought we'd be able to be surrounded by fans here and we're having a nightmare where we could film this from. It's not the same without you. So watching at home, you know, tuck into the leftover turkey from yesterday and uh, sit down in the warm and watch the game. But it's just not going to be the same, is it? No, no, not at all. Um, and, and have a beer because you can't do that and watch the game. Then me. Um, well, you can. <laughs> that will be a fun match. <laughs> can only improve it. <laughs> um, now you've got the team news, and we've got a graphic again. So let me just oh, do. Hang on, no, we don't work out where we go. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay, cool. Do it now. Do it now. Yeah, okay. so it's, it's pretty much as you would expect in this United today. Uh, Rob Atkinson comes in um, for John Massinio, who's got poorly committee. He's promised this is going to turn up on this move. So look forward to Moose facing on this half of the screen in a minute. I think that's a fairly settled side, don't you think? That the last few games have been kind of that starting eleven. Yeah, and I think what we saw uh, last night when things had to shuffle, um, it looked a lot more comfortable, I think. Yeah, we expect that to be a 4-3-3, but we know that you can five in midfield and change to a 4-4-2 from that shape. The only kind of fix, Matty Taylor will probably play as centre forward. The two centre halves are pretty fixed, but it's a very flexible eleven. Um those that are going to ask, Cameron Brannigan doesn't make the bench today. Uh, he was, he's close, he could do, he's fit. And Carl's just said that he, it was the longest conversation ever explaining why he wasn't going to put him in. Cam, um, when he did his eye problem, he's had to take steroids to fix that. So the first couple of weeks, uh, he had to train on his own. Um, around running around, he, he ran quite a lot. After that, he could then get into the group thing. He's around, he's pretty fit, but he's not had a match, has he? And there are games, a lot of games coming up Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday. So he misses out. Uh, Sam Winnell, very much the same thing. Play the game last Saturday that I got to see. It's going to be a case of them slotting in, getting 15, 20 minutes, I think. It's the run of games managing got. the return. Yeah, I think so. There's a lot of strain on this. We've had 12 days, so people like Rob Atkinson's had time to recover uh, from the knock. So why would you risk throwing them into a big game like this? Ease them back in. Uh, they could have done a few minutes at the, at the, at the end of the game. We've got players to cope with that. We've got Mide, who I thought was actually really good last game. Misses out today and Jordan comes in. So, I got um, to see Paul get on last Yeah, game well. a, 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 a people at home will notice Rob tackled back and, and Dan Adji actually made the goal. He, he, you know, he scored the goal and ran, shot it up in the top corner. But um, it was Rob Paul closing somebody down that made that. That's great to see. Um, the, uh, Take the graphic off, they can see it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you can see the opposition coming out there. Uh, there we are. Then. Not politically, just uh, today's opponents. Um, people at home don't realise as well. They can use the change rooms. The change rooms here a bit. Um, at a lot of away games, we've been um, in lounges or family rooms. We've not been able to use the proper change rooms. But here, uh, they can manage it. They come out for their warm up now. They're not allowed in the tunnel at the same time as our players. Uh, the same for the run out. So. If you watch an eye follow a little bit later, I stand just on the line down there and I have to go like this to start the music. It's a nightmare because they're not coming out at the same time. It's like an old that's steps for each Yeah, it's, it's very much five, six, seven, eight, yeah. start the music. Thank you very much. This isn't live. No one's watching this, are they? Uh, not many. No, <laughs> good, 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 good. Um, it's difficult because you don't come running out all at the same time. They, um, one by one, and usually we're waiting on past before I notice to start the music. Oh, I should also mention as well, we're going to get into trouble. Can you hear music? You wait till YouTube what, catch you. What music? <laughs> <laughs> this isn't my account. It's fine. It's fine. Um, right. Okay. So um, other things that have happened recently, uh, your hospital appeal that you spoke about last yeah, time. Yeah, this was quite amazing. So with, with the hospital, we raised over 2000 Thank you to everybody at home. Uh, on uh, the 23rd, um, I was a bit fed up on the 23rd because uh, the game found out for the right fans. It was a hard day for all of us. Carl, I was just talking to Carl and... Uh, Missing the fans, it, but the twenty third, we all got a bit low about that. So I said, oh, "Who wants five hundred programs?" And a fan wrote, they tweeted me and said, "I'll have thirty quid, hundred quid for it. You give them to kids." 
um, which is great. But I thought, well, how can we do that to, to spread the word? So I put them up on uh, the official Twitter and people can make a donation to the children's hospital by a sign program. Um, and we've got about 50 of them have gone. Most people bidding 20 pounds, some people bid a five or some people, one person bid 100 pounds. So we have made an awful lot more money for the children's hospital. So as one of you, thank you very much. Um, just wait a bit, I've got to get 50 programs signed, which it's not going to be easy and uh, I'm going to catch the post, but we'll get those out to you as quick as we can. Very cool as well. Um, the uh, speaking of great causes and great days, yesterday was Christmas. The players had a day off, but I'm right in thinking that they had to send a video through to Carl Robinson. Yeah, so there's a future. Um, I'm part of that as well, um, so I can monitor what the idiots are doing on social media. Um, they had to send a video to Carl. Um, he set the tone. He went for a run early in the morning. Uh, he, he always says that. When we go on um, pre-season tours, we're running at six. I'm not. They're running. <laughs> they're running. I'm just getting, I'm just getting home. <laughs> But they're, they're um, running at six in the morning. Uh, Carl does that on Christmas Day. Um, and then he asked the players to go on a, a, I don't know how long the run is, but to tweet, send a message to the group chat during that. Uh, some of them took it literally. I won't name the player, but one of them was dressed as Father Christmas on a sledge with two other players dressed as reindeer pulling the sledge. So it wasn't Jamie Mackey, he's not here this time. Uh, that was a... a, a, a Decent highlight, but most of the others were like, I'm out of breath. Can Merry Christmas, everybody. Um, it was good. Um, oh, I can hear a short voice down there. I think the players just going to out uh, down behind us. So um, they've worked hard on Christmas Day, done their own little bits. Um, they've not really had a drink, um, unlike you, obviously, by your age. Yeah, yeah. Um, not today. I don't know if you drive today. Oh. Yes, yesterday I had a drink. Um, I hope you all did at home as well. So the players did, um, they had a programme to follow um, yesterday. And uh, they're now going out for the warm up. I can see the movement behind me. Yeah, that's that's them just trotting off there. Count them. Are they the right number? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that is all of them. I think. Yeah, good. So the rain's starting to fall. They're out there. Chris Short, Craig Short are uh, the Chris has set all the time. I've got them all ready to go. Oh, yeah. Um, I missed a couple. There we go. Yeah, um, they're all out there, you said. <laughs> Anthony Ford and Mede came out a little bit late. Yeah, and uh, and who is that? Robbie Hall. Yeah, he's got swagger that boy. Um, right, okay. Well, instead of just waiting for Moose, let's Moose say is never going to turn up. <laughs> I'm coming to you. It's five minutes. I, I spent a lot of my time waiting in corridors with John to turn up. So he, he takes his time eventually. hobbling a, uh, along. To no, he, he's fine. He's, he, he, there was a horrible moment last game when he got injured right on halfway and he stayed down for quite some time. And I thought we left the screens around him and shoot him. But <laughs> uh, he, he got up, he somehow, I don't know how, carried on for 10 minutes. Yeah, 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 played till half time. How on earth did he do it? There he is, again. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Uh, uh, his way around. Well, we can so, do a seamless link, can't we? And I can, I can play a video, and by the time the video finished, he'll be. No, 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 he's storming up the. Look, Following yes. up the steps. We've seen him pace down the wing. Yeah. Here he is. So last time I saw him, he was lying on that piece of grass just down there. But now he's got himself out. Come on. There we go. go on okay. Well, very lovely. It's uh, good. A good. There we are. You are. You are live. Are Please lying? do not swear. Yeah, do I'm, not say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All of that. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Um. How was How was your your big day? Yeah. It was all right. It was all right. Probably the first one in a few years where I knew I was going to be involved. So I think that's what more and. Um, couple of bites to eat, a couple of drinks, it was very nice. And how is the knee? The knee's okay, it's settled down quite nicely, um, back on, back on obviously without crutches, and yeah, hopefully it settles down the next week. So um, we'll see from what was your video that you had to send through? I didn't have to do one yesterday, no, because I wasn't involved, three. so yeah, I didn't have to do one. Uh, most of the lads just did about a four or five second video from the field park, and after the 16th one, I watched them. <laughs> just skip them, yeah, a couple of, the end. Yeah, a couple of interviews. Excellent. So, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, from your point of view, um, you was it nice to relax a bit more, or was there that it was uh, sweet? Yeah, I mean, I would have, I would have much preferred to have been preparing properly. Uh, you know, it's, it's obviously been injured, and I suppose it was yeah, nice so benefits, side effects of being injured. But yeah, I think um, ultimately, if you've got a choice, I would much rather be extremely Christmas Day. Pretty much me last the Christmas dinner, so yeah, that was a bit unfortunate. Really, so now we just want the rest of this. Yeah, um, we've just talked about your hospital um, sort of work that you've been doing with Chris, um, 
and that's going really well. Um, it started out about films, um, and in a minute there's a link about Christmas films. Die Hard, is it a Christmas movie? Yeah, yeah, why not? Why not? I think there's, there's no criteria for Christmas movies or Christmas songs these days. I think if you get too heads up about what is a Christmas movie or a Christmas song, I think your mind might explode. So it's better just to accept Die yeah. Hard as a Christmas film because it's set. Excellent. I'll take that. I'll take that as an answer. Uh, well, thanks very much for for being live no on problem. this. Um, and I'm going to go seamlessly to talk to well Chris's interview, talking to a few others about Christmas. Heroes. <laughs> Celebrations. Order. No quality street. What just? You hold definitely. I don't know, I'm having some celebrations. <sighs> Quality street. Good one. So which one's the best? I like the purple one. The um the gold one. The toffees? The ones. They're the best. Right? That's it. Celebrations. Wrong answer. <laughs> <laughs> celebrations. Heroes. Oh, um I do like Heroes, actually. Heroes. Celebrations. Yes. Nod. Ha. Ah, not a sprout, man, me. <laughs> no. Yes. No, no chance. <laughs> not a chance in hell. Um, I normally have the token one, yeah, just so I've had one, I'll be honest. <laughs> Ever since I was a kid, yeah. <laughs> Depends how they're cooked. What's the best way of cooking them? A bit of honey on them and... Oh, no, that makes it worse. That, you know. no, I'm just thinking, in the oven and crisp no, up a bit. No, 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 there's nothing makes them good. Sure, crisp. What, like your head? <laughs> uh, lovely, I'm joined by club historian Martin Fredetsky, who, Hello. last time I said I'm not allowed to talk to you because yeah. we never win. We won 4-0. 4-0, obviously he broke the tradition. Yeah, we've got that to do that. that. I mean, in terms of superstition, I'm wearing a Christmas jumper, which works today, yeah. but it's because I wore it last time. And if, hopefully, I'll still be wearing it in April, every day, That'd sweating away. Oh, yeah, we'll look forward to that. <laughs> uh, right, okay, so Club Historian, we don't have a graphic today, right. unfortunately, so it, we've just got to take your word for it. Yeah. How are we against AFC Wimbledon? Um, not too bad, not bad at all. Um, we've played them 20 times since I won four today. Uh, we've only lost four. Uh, we've drawn four. We've won 12. Uh, Unbeaten in our last first uh, 12 games or so against them. Uh, unbeaten in the last four as well, importantly. Okay. So, yeah, we're, we're pretty decent against them. So, so the far. overall stats are good. It does, yeah. after those first 12, look a bit... Yeah, yeah it doesn't look so good after that. Yeah. Everyone wants to beat But, uh, obviously, as we all know, stats are there to be changed. So let's hope that we can maintain our good record today. Oh, uh, yeah. When was the last time we won 4-0 two games in a row? That's a very good question. I'll look it up. There we go. Um, <laughs> I also think we're all right on Boxing Day. Our Boxing Day stats are pretty good. Very good, yeah. Um, I don't have the figures in hand, but we just spend that on <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah, no, I mean, I, I, we have obviously lost occasion on Boxing Day, but I, I think you have to go back a long way to find us losing sort of uh, three or four years on the bounce in Boxing Day. And they say, I, mean, I hope, we've been lucky the last uh, eight or so games on Boxing Day. We've only had one or two away, I think. So, uh, we have not got a draw on that one and uh, take advantage of it. Absolutely. Uh, the other one I always hear Chris ask you in the preview show, which is on iFollow, so do check that out. Um, who has played for both? Oh, it's been a number. Our, uh, our playoff winning side from 2010, uh, four of them went on to play for the Northern. Wow, um, okay. Like Brad Park, Jack Mitson, uh, Arvid Potter, and someone else. Someone else? Uh, Danny Gordon. Yeah, uh, yeah, of, yeah. of course. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Plus, um, players like Danny Hilton's played for uh, both teams. Yeah, yeah. There's been quite, quite a number. Uh, Sean Rigg. Sean Rigg, indeed, yeah. yes. I remember him from the wing. That's right, yeah. Um, Considering they've had such a short history, we've had quite a few. Players. Yeah, and we were with them in a few leagues as well, so that's why there have been so many games. Oh, that's right, yeah. 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 Um, and another seamless thing to what is in your hand right now, a programme. A programme, a printed programme. Yeah. Or, uh, all the to buy. Yeah, <laughs> obviously, uh, was, was all lined up, ready to go, when yeah. the fans were still allowed. That's them. right. Um, we're not too sure yet. We might continue printing them, if not for sale, despite the lack of fans, because obviously people like it. Uh, we like it. We love the programmes. Um, this one has a great interview with Sean Clare. Um, you've made it in the club shop. We haven't got it uh, 
pre-order it, you get it from the club shop, or you can send an email to program at oufc.co.uk, and uh, I'll get back to you for paying for it. Uh, it's three pounds plus a uh, bit of postage, obviously, but uh, it's well worth having. Could be a collector's item. Like, could be could be for that second one they're winning a row yeah, exactly who knows uh right okay so we've got more christmasy questions for the players and they are right here oh my favorite is home alone. one or two i prefer one have you seen three and four I've seen all of Home Alone. They should have stopped after two, shouldn't they? I agree. <laughs> <laughs> and then, as soon as they change the character. Yeah. Mmm. Polar Express. Oh, love me. I love that. that. I love that one, I swear. Absolutely brilliant. Right way in my went to Home Alone. Yeah. One or two? One. Um, oh, can't drop that on me. Um, yeah, you got time, you're already done. Yeah, I mean, I want to say Home Alone, obviously. Did you say Home Alone 1 or Home Alone 2? Uh, I think Home Alone 1, isn't it? They're both good, Home Alone 1. Um, I've been watching a few lately, actually. Yeah, because you've got kids. Yeah. Christmas Chronicles. I'll give you some. Alpha Christmas. Really? Yeah. Not the best, but like, just what I've watched. I don't think I've seen that. Ooh. No. Um, what's the other one I watched? Obviously, Miracle on 34th Street, but. Have you seen It's a Wonderful Life, the greatest Christmas movie ever made? No. Home Alone? Yeah, I'm a Home Alone. One yeah. or two? One. One hundred. Yeah, it's got to be one. No. Two is better. Have you seen three? Actually, no, no, I agree with you. Two, two. Lost right. in New York. New York. Yeah. yeah. Number one's legendary, man, because they're at home, but what are they going abroad for? Stay in your yard. Because they're loaded. To be fair, them. though, they kill it, don't they? Yes. How many, how many home homes are there? At least four? three or four, yeah. yeah. How, many, how many times can you leave a kid at home at Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> also, what's his dad's dad's How many times do you lose a kid? Yeah. Uh, Kath uh, is, is joining me. Hello, Kath. Hello. Um, and we were just talking about Christmas films. You are a firm believer that Die Hard is a Christmas film, and not just a Christmas film. You're you're like it's the Christmas film. Yeah, I think it's my favourite Christmas film. Not just trying to be clever. I think as I had the argument with Chris because I know um, it's a wonderful life is one of his favourite Christmas films. But Die Hard is fundamentally a Christmas film because it can only take place on Christmas Eve because the entire film. Yeah, absolutely. Whereas well, most of it's a wonderful life happens it's, throughout the year, doesn't it? Yes, um, and the fact that it's Christmas is irrelevant. Yeah. So that's not really a Christmas film. Yeah. Um, I say that because he's not actually in the year as well. <laughs> Do you know what? Since, since we've been rabbiting on about that, the viewers have gone up. So, You're excellent. Uh, let's sack off the football. No, we won't do that. Um, I meant to, the, in the script I've got, I'm talking to you about the fans and the atmosphere here. Obviously, this was written before um, Tier 4 all happened. Um, it's gutting, isn't it? Yeah, it's really disappointing. Um, obviously, a lot of my friends would have been here today uh, in normal circumstances, and uh, a lot of people got late calls as well due to the change, the original change in tiers, where people weren't like, allowed to leave their region. So the ticket office had a brilliant day where they were able to phone around and say, "We've got spare tickets. Do you want to come to the game um, on, on Wednesday?" I think it was after they did the first tier announcements, and then to change it and us not to be able to have fans in today is is devastating really obviously for fans but for, for all the club staff and players as well it's really disappointing yeah um and with your other hat on um obviously assistant are you assistant manager assistant head coach, uh, what, assistant coach of yeah. the uh, of the women's team um they've suspended uh yes so with oxford now being in tier four um all our games are suspended most of the teams in our league apart from Plymouth, i believe are now in tier four so the, the league is suspended um we were meant to have a game on the 22nd before the new regulations came in we were away to plymouth which is obviously uh, an eight hour round trip yeah not ideal right. in in this in these circumstances um and because of the change of regulations Fine if you can have the roof down <laughs> <laughs> we're probably not in yeah. um 
the change in regulations meant the league gave us the option. And we also only had, because of the change in tiers, uh, four first team players available for that fixture. So us, like every other team in our league, cancelled that game as well. Just, to, I mean, it's, it's really to be on the safe side. We want our players and our staff and opposition players and staff to be safe going into a day when they were going to be allowed to see people possibly for the last time for a lot of them for a, who knows how long, but hopefully not too long we can get back in the football point. Yeah, but it is suspended. It's not written off. No, no, it's just suspended at the moment. Obviously, we'll be waiting to see in January when they announce the tiers again. If areas get reduced to tier three, we are allowed to play. Uh, even in tier three, we are allowed to travel. So um, even if the restrictions are tight on... On movement for everything else. Hopefully, um, this short period will allow us to get back and play football. And have you had any games behind closed doors? Uh, no, we haven't. All the games that we've played at home have been in front of fans, and, and fans, also fans, have been brilliant. Since while they weren't able to get to the men's team, uh, we did see a boost in crowds, and then you came to a couple. Yeah. Um, and I think it was great to see people who just wanted to come and watch some football, and hopefully they they saw that. The standard we've been playing at recently. Oh, it's brilliant! Um, it's been uh, really good. Four one, I think, against Cardiff was the, the first one. I come to see. Yeah, yeah, Brilliant. we've had some really good results, and I know our gaffer would want me to say um, we've uh, we've now finished our 2020 fixtures with one defeat in 2020 across the two seasons. Amazing. So, yeah, and that's since you came in, isn't it? Uh, well, I've been there three years, so. <laughs> um, but no, we're happy as growth every year. But since. Um, the club dropped out of the championship but uh, we're going into 2021 in second place behind Watford uh, just uh, one point off them with a the game in hand so fingers crossed we are able to finish the season yeah, because yeah, uh, it could be a, a good finish uh, absolutely. Okay, so uh, one more video from iFollow. If you haven't got an iFollow account, you can uh, sign up for that and watch the whole video and of course get your match ticket for today's game. Um, here's one of the interviews. Yeah, it's been tough. Uh, it's been tough for everyone. Just stop, start, and not knowing when when you're coming back to football and all the limitations uh, for everyone. So, yeah, and no fans. It's it's been tough, but we'll get there eventually. <laughs> uh, yeah, it has been tough, especially with the pandemic as well, and obviously with the fans not being there, and obviously getting to Wembley and losing Wembley. So, yeah, I think it's been a bad 2020. Training, can only get better, right? We can, you can. From an individual point of view, it's been quite a good one. Obviously, it's, it's almost been a year now since I've been here. Uh, I've come in as um, a non-league player, unproven, no no league games under the belt, and now I've now I'm starting when I'm fit and playing well and. So yeah, it's been a good year from a from an individual point of view, but obviously collectively as a as a society as, as a world it's been a it's been a very hard year and um, I keep think I keep hoping that it's gonna be over at some point but doesn't really look like it, does it? <laughs> like we've got another tough year. It's been really hard. Um and people keep saying on oh, 2021, I can't wait for the new year and the start of the new year. Well, unfortunately, we'll be going into this year in a much worse place than what we started 2020. We just hope that we started 2020 okay. And it, it got to one of the worst years in our lives to an extent. And we know we're going to start 2021 in a bad place. But we, we, we all feel that as the year rolls on we hope it will it will gradually become better um and the sad thing is christmas as well because i think obviously not having family around and having again the freedom to do the right things and see friends and family over new year's eve and that period in between boxing day and new year's eve and people are generally off and getting around going to the pub going to the cinema doing all the things that we always do so that's going to be even harder but it's uh yeah in our world in a in a, in a weird way over christmas it's it, it's not different we, we'll be playing games, we'll be in work, we'll be recovering, we'll be sleeping, we'll be going again. So it, in a weird way, it won't affect us. It's almost like a normal year for us. But hopefully, I can say 2021 can be a much better year. And you say you can't use football, but I, I, there's two moments in our in 2020 that we, won't want to, we do want to forget. One's a Swindon game, 
and the other one is the Wembley game. And uh, so good riddance to 2020. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult for everybody. Um, but, you know, we're not, it's not certain individuals, you know, doing separate to everyone else, uh, we're all in the same boat. So for me, you know, just stay safe and, um, and enjoy the quality time you have with people in your household. Uh, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a tough year, a bit of a roller coaster, hasn't it? Um, but it was sort of, just sort of uh, kept in contact with as many people as you, as you can and um, that's all you could do really and I had to try and stay positive. Um, I had another, I had my second child as well so that kept me busy and um, kept me focused to be fair. There was a few months that went quite quick because of him, <laughs> one way or another, changing nappies, whatever you, but um, yeah, it's not been ideal and hopefully 2021 is uh, going to be a lot better. Um, tough, but you know, there's, there's people going through a lot worse than what I'm going through and that's how I see it, so it is what it is. We move on to 2021 and I hope things can look, look up. So joined by another Liam now, Liam uh, Potter, hello. Um, we've been watching the warm-ups uh, whilst you were watching that video. Um, it's it's really weird not having fans here because it looks so much like a normal match day and yeah. there's just something missing. Yeah, exactly. Um, obviously, the intensity is still there um, and it all looks the same, but everyone is missing fans. I think those, those three or four games that we had with fans in really made us realise how much we miss them if we didn't already. Um, and yeah, it's, I mean, preparation will stay the same, but we are definitely missing fans today. Yeah, absolutely. Dan, Dan had his goal from the edge of the box against Northampton in the last couple of minutes. It wasn't going in, but the fans sucked it in. You could <laughs> feel it happening. Um, what is the general mood like down in the dressing room? Yeah, the, as, as always, they're, they're a positive group. Um, and that translates um, in everything really. Um, but I was, I was speaking to a few other players and they feel exactly the same way. They are positive about the game. I think everybody loves a boxing day game and it's a big fixture for a lot of people. Um, generally just absolutely gutted that the fans can't be here with us watching the game and cheering them on because they've made such a positive impact over the last few games. Yeah, and then as a unit, you can see uh, Sean Clare's assist, first goal against Northampton. Um, I think a couple of players ran to Matty Taylor, who obviously put the ball in, but most players made a beeline straight to him, and, and that's sort of testament to the group. Yeah, that, that just shows exactly the spirit they have, and obviously with the fans being in as well, it just gave them an extra 10% to just keep them going and keep pushing. Um, and they could have just kind of the game off at 2 or 3 0, um, but they wanted that extra goal. And hopefully, they can use that as their advantage today and um, reach a little bit of that spirit. Uh, okay, so uh, previous games against Wimbledon, uh, do you have any standout games in mind? Absolutely. Um, it's one that feels like a, an absolute lifetime ago, but it's actually only in February this year. Um, we won 5-0. Uh, yes, uh, yes. Yeah, great great. Yeah, um, Nathan Holland scored twice, Matthew Taylor scored twice, and James Henry, a lovely little chip. Uh, from a good Marcus Brown through ball, so which I didn't know that's the game you were going to say, but we've genuinely got that clip, so I'll play that in just a second. There we go. Um, yeah, it does feel like seasons ago, doesn't it? It does, it feels like such a long time. I think everyone's been through so much this year, um, and all the days kind of blur into one, um, especially if you've not been at work or you've got various other things going on. Um, yeah, that was that was actually this year, but yeah, it just felt a very long time ago. Absolutely. So uh, let's have a look at the highlights from that cold evening in February.
So that was last time uh, we played AFC Wimbledon. The players are just making their way back in now to the dressing room before kickoff. Chris will be writing the match report from right where I'm standing right now. I'm going to be doing the Instagram. Uh, you've got Mark, Martin Fredetsky doing the Twitter and Liam Potter doing the moments you missed around the ground. So um, in the meantime, make sure you have your iFollow ticket. Thanks very much for watching and goodbye. Following your heart, in spirit, in soul. You make every tackle, score every goal. You're part of it wherever you are in the world. From the first minute until the last kick. Victories, heartbreaks, you're part of the fabric, the passion, devotion, supercharging emotion. For you, there is only one. Abiding loyalty, togetherness, that is second to none. Follow every kick, every tackle, every goal. With access to live stream games and match day commentary. With coverage spanning the globe. Behind the scene content, newsletters and match highlights. There's no better way for you to get closer to your club. And with like follow sales supporting them, there's no better way to show your love. And you can't be there. Be there with I follow.